Hey YouTube, guess who? It's your boy SL Mundo, better known as just Mundo A1 in the world of War and Order from Ram 491. I'm here with a video about. Let's see what we're gonna talk about. Let's talk about the beast today. We're gonna talk about the beast in this video <coughs> and. The best skills and equipment for it. Now, I said uh, equipment, but just the best skills and the best way to grow. I believe the beast is very, very important. As you see, when it comes to the first skill, I haven't upgraded it at all. I upgraded it one level, but I haven't focused on it at all. I really don't care for it. It doesn't kill enough for me to, uh, it don't benefit my army enough to put it as a priority of the skills that I do have. So, uh, right now my beast is level 23 and remember it has been two and a half years guys and it's at level 23 and I'm halfway through 23 I cannot wait to get it to level 25 because at level 25 you unlock your six skill which my six skill will be anti-infantry increases damage to infantry 1.6% so of course I want that uh, and uh, I, of course I have plenty of resources I, I could evolve it as soon as I reach level 25 but since I don't spend much money on stuff I just have to spend my gems whenever the hot sale come around and buy all of the beast experience so that's how I'm upgrading my beast through the hot sale and making sure I attack my farms and keep my uh, beast stamina on zero. You want to attack your farms with your beast to keep that experience constantly pumping. You want that stamina constantly pumping. You want to always get that stamina and always get that experience. So you want your stamina completely depleted until like the day before war. You want to go ahead and let it build up because you know you're gonna go to war. So you're gonna you want to you you're gonna want him in your attacks. Uh. Let's see how I grew my beast. Well, what what skills I prioritized? The first skill I prioritized was army expansion. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and equip it. This is what it looked like when I have when I go to war. <coughs> I have my army expansion, my attack expert, my life source. They're all level nineteen. Army expansion gives me ten percent bonus to my army size uh attack expert give me 16 percent attack bonus and life source give me 16 percent hp bonus all of those are what you need to have an effective army army size hp attack and also defense but they don't have a defense one on here so except for the panda the panda itself boosts the defense uh Every 13 seconds, it boosts the front row defense by 21% for 5%. So, with this setup, I do have army expansion, attack, life, I mean, attack, HP, and defense bonuses with this beast. And that's why I chose this beast, because I could boost all of the basic stats, the basic bonuses. And uh, like as you heard me say in my uh, previous videos, that's what I call HP, attack, and defense. Those are basic bonuses. Uh, so, as I said, I prioritize army expansion, and then I uh, so I was using until I unlock either life source or attack expert. After I unlocked either one of those, I then. Uh, caught it up to whatever my army expansion was which I was about level 16 and so at that point I upgraded my attack export to level 16 and by doing that I would from the hot sales I would buy all the scrolls all the scrolls all the beast scrolls so if you buy all uh, what is it I believe 50 scrolls from the gym hot sales 
and you apply it to a fresh brand new skill that's at level one i believe it takes it immediately to level seven so it took about maybe two or three months to get it to level 16 and evened up and honestly i would do life source first and if I'm not mistaken, I actually did do life source first because I'm real big on HP. I feel like the longer your army is alive, the better, the more kills you get, and the less you get killed. Also, so um, I think I did life source first, and then I did attack expert. So that was how I prioritized those. As you see, my B second skill is level 16, and Right now, that is currently what I am upgrading. That's why I'm focusing all of my beast scrolls on right now uh, to get that to level 19. So then I have everything level 19. When I'm not at war, I do have my level up booster equipped. I have that at level 7 for a 6.4% bonus. Uh, I use that when I'm not at war because I want the bonus lord level. Uh, I mean, bonus uh, experience to my lord, so I can keep my lord level going at a decent decent speed. Uh, but when I finally, like I said, when I finally do get my beast to level 25, I would be uh, applying anti infantry. And so, by what is guide? Oh. Uh, Okay. All right. It just tell you everything about all the skills. Um, when I do uh, get my beast, uh, blah, blah, blah. when I do get my second skill, I mean to level nineteen, I'll be focusing on my scrolls on infantry. And so, about time I do unlock my fifth skill, my entire infantry should be at a very decent level. It should be in a double digits it should be maybe level 13 14 15 somewhere around there so it it's soon it'll be a, a great effect a great bonus as soon as i apply it and that will combine with as i always say i use t10 arches i don't use my t11 arches uh i use t10 arches for the bonus the damage bonus against infantry which is 30%. Uh, combine that damage bonus against infantry with the damage bonus I would have from the anti-infantry skill with my beast. And then we're going to combine that damage bonus with the damage increase against infantry 10.5% from my uh, crossbow. But we're also going to include the 13.6% damage increase when attacking. And then I have that twice, actually. I have that also on my accessory. So that's actually a 27.6% damage bonus. Those, those, those are my belt on my, and my accessory. So that's a 27% damage bonus plus 10.5 from my uh, uh, archer. I mean, from my sword. So that's 37.6%. Seven, yeah, that's thirty-seven point seven damage bonus. From that, we're gonna add another thirty from my archers whenever they're aiming at infantry. So at that point, it's sixty-seven point seven damage bonus. All right, and then whatever percentage I also gain from uh anti-infantry, which will judging. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see how much it go up each level. It goes up 0.9% each level. So, almost about a percent each level. So, at level 10, yeah, at level 10, it'll be about 9 more, maybe even 10% uh, damage added onto that. So, I'll be in with a, a, a damage bonus aiming at infantry. I would be uh, at about... 70 percent so about 70 almost 80 percent damage bonus with all of those combined together that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful combination 
You know what I'm saying? My my T10 archers are stronger than any T11 mage that aims at any whether he is aiming at T11 infantry or T10 infantry. My my T10 archers are stronger than them. I would kill those infantry much faster than they will. So that's that's what I'm going for with those combinations. So yeah, this is a quick short video about my B skills. What I prioritize, what I think others should prioritize. Now, now also I don't only have to settle for infantry, anti-infantry. I could very well, you know, uh, troops attacking angels. I could go to anti-angel, but the thing is, you, you don't run into angels in, as common as you would, you know, infantry. So, yeah. Or I could put resist resist magic where it reduces the mage damage. But it's going to be a long time before I get that. <laughs> I, I need a lot of fragments for that. But uh, that, would, that would benefit my army type as well. Because I, two things about my army. I'm real big on infantry HP. And I'm real big on mage reduction. I want my army to be the mage killing army. So <clears throat> this I will use either one of those two. So uh and honestly that depends on the target that I'm attacking. It depends on the uh the castle that I'm attacking. If I if I'm attacking uh if I'm attacking somebody who has tremendous mage uh statistics i might i might just go ahead and put that mage reduction on instead of the infantry kill uh damage increase on me so it's all in the moment it's all a strategy or whatever for the most part yeah so when i set traps and stuff when i set up traps i used my wounded limit i use the wounded limit increase I take off my uh the only thing that I interchange at this moment and have been for the past uh two years is my experience booster and my uh army size increase because you don't necessarily always need your army size increase uh you only need enough on a on an everyday basis without warring having crazy wars and stuff you only need two hundred thousand troops to kill a T uh, a level 29 monster or a level 30 monster so you don't even need more than that and naturally without my bonuses on without my B skill bonus and without my Levithian on I, 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 I marched 240,000 so it's already overkill so I don't even need the expansion on but since I am a trapper I trap I trap and I trap so I use the wounded limit whenever I'm trapping people because just in case just in case I haven't got caught slipping yet because I'm I, I'm always like a few steps ahead but just in case you never know I, I still want to save as many troops as possible if I do get in a bad situation um, I thought about upgrading Recruitment speed. I guess it would have been a good idea, but I'm not really worried about recruitment speed. My, my recruitment speed is pretty decent, especially with this uh, Templar armor. Uh, I hope this video was informative to you about the beast. A uh, few tips about growing your beast. One, when the hot sale come around, get that experience. You want to get all, all the experience. Either me personally, at first I started out, I would get every single stroll all the scrolls i will get all of the scrolls and upgrade my skills but as you get higher you realize how much longer it takes to upgrade your uh, skills and your beast you realize that you'll have to start focusing on your experience a bit more now if you could afford to buy both from the hot sale if you have enough gems to buy both i suggest you get all 60,000 beast experience and all 50 uh beast scrolls and grow that beast your beast is very important so don't sleep on your beast you could do it free to free to play players don't forget 
you want to send your you want to send your uh panda to your farm and get you want that stamina on zero if you're not finna go to war you want to get as much stamina out of that you want to get all the free stuff as possible oh yeah and speaking of which if if you plan on growing your beast you want to complete all of the events that reward you with beast scrolls and beast experience when it comes to the merchant shop you want to buy all the beast experience see i bought the beast experience down there you want to buy the beast experience you want to buy the scrolls that come out of there those those those, those should be your priority uh those should be like one of the only items, very few items that you should even buy from the merchant. Uh, experience for your beast and scroll. Even the uh, beast skill fragment chest. You want to get all of those because it takes a long time to get those. And even if you do unlock uh, skills that you don't use, you can always fuse those into the skills that you do use. So I hope these tips help you get an idea of how you should grow your beast uh, like I said, I chose the panda because I wanted that defense skill. I wanted the attack, HP, and defense boost, and the army boost. Everything that makes your army great, that's what he provided for me. That that skill comes on as soon as the Pegasus skill come on also. So I nullify. It basically nullified their attack bonus while uh, when they have it. So... It, that's a good thing. Like I said, I'm trying to be a mage killer. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from, the, from this video or possibly learned any ideas on how to grow your beast. Enjoy the rest of your day. SL Mundo, I'll be back with another video.